Hello everyone and welcome back. In this session, we are going to observe solve problems on binary codes. So, without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of today's session, today we will observe three solve problems on different binary codes. Consider the first question Which of the following is an invalid 8421 code? So, these are the options given. So, what we will do, in the previous session, we observed the chart for the 8421 codes, didn't we? So, we will take all the options one by one and judge whether they are available in this particular chart. Now, coming to the first option, that is A, it gives us 0011. Now, if you observe this particular chart, you can see the symbol 3 in decimal is actually encoded using this particular code 0011. So, yes, this is available and it's a valid 8421 code. So, this can't be the option. Now, coming to option B, it is 1001, right? Look at the chart. You can see for the symbol 9, we have the encoding as 1001, right? So, this too is a valid 8421 code. Now, coming to option C, it is 1000. Observe, for 8, the encoding is 1000. So, this too is a valid 8421 code. So, that leaves us with only option D. Now, if you observe, 1101 is not enlisted in this particular chart. So, clearly, this is an invalid 8421 code. Now, we can also determine the correct answer without taking help from the chart. But for that, we will have to memorize the sequence order. However, the easy thing is, the encoding for 8421 for the symbol 0 to 9 is actually similar to the unsigned ones, right? So, if we can derive all the patterns from zeros, to 9, that is 1001, anything bigger than 1001 will be an invalid 8421 code. Keeping that in mind, we can easily find out the option D is an invalid 8421 code. Let's move on to the next question. Which of the following is an invalid XS3 code? So, these are the options given. Similar to the previous way, we will again take the help of the chart that we have seen in the previous session. And thereafter, judging all the different options one by one, we will find out the invalid one. So, let's begin. Now, coming to option A, it is 0110, right? Now, if you observe, for the encoding of 3, we have 0110 in XS3. So, this is a valid XS3 code. Let's observe the option B now. Triple one zero. Now, if you look at the chart, you won't be able to find this particular value. So, clearly, this is going to be an invalid XS3 code. But before making up our mind, let's be certain about this option by judging the next two. So, C is giving us 1000. Now, if you observe, for 5 in XS3, we have the encoding 1000. So, yes, this too is a valid XS3 code. Now, coming to option D. 1100 is given. Observe the chart. You will find that for 9, the encoding in XS3 is 1100. So, this too is a valid XS3 code. Now, since we have judged all the options and based on our findings, now we can clearly say that the option B is the correct choice for this particular question. Now, there is another shortcut to determine these answers. Now, what is that? If you remember, XS3 codes. Although they are non weighted but they are sequential. All we have to remember is, for the encoding of 0, we use the encoding of 3, that is 0011 from 8421. Afterwards, everything is sequential. So, for 9, we will have the last one, 1100, that is the encoding of 12 in unsigned numbers. So, anything bigger than 1100 and anything lesser than 0011, will be an invalid XS3 code. Let's now move on to the next question. Encode the decimal value 785 in first binary, that is base 2, then in 8421, in XS3, in 2421, and in 3321. So, let's begin with the binary conversion. Now, if you remember, during the session conversion from decimal, we saw for a particular decimal value, in order to convert that particular decimal value to binary quickly, what we can do? Instead of performing factorization with the value 2, we can ease it up if we start factorization of that particular number through 16. 
Now, 16 times 49 is 784. So, that will give us 1 as remainder. Now, if we divide 49 by 16 once again, 16 times 3 is actually 48. So, this will give us 1 as remainder once again. Now, finally, dividing 3 by 16 will give 0 as quotient and the remainder will be 3. Now, all we have to do is enlist the remainders in the reverse order. So, we end up getting 311 in hexadecimal, right? Now, what we will do, we will take this hexadecimal value and thereafter, we will convert all the different digits in 4-bit binary. So, 1 is actually going to be 0001. Then, this one will also be 0001. Coming to 3, the binary for 3 is 0011. Now, if we omit the prefix zeros, we will end up acquiring the binary value of 785, that is 110001. So, this is the binary value of the decimal number 785. Let's now move on to the next part, that is, now we will encode the value 785 in decimal in 8421. So, let's do that. Now, the 785, it has three different digits, right? So, following the rule of 8421, we will need three different segments for 8421s to encode each of the digits. Now, if we consider 7, in 8421, the encoding of 7 is 0 triple 1. Now, why is so? Because 4 plus 2 is 6 and 6 plus 1 is eventually 7. Coming to 8, the encoding of that is 1 triple 0 because 1 is placed underneath the place value 8, right? Now, let's figure out the encoding for 5. This will be 0101. Observe the placement of the 1s. 1s are placed underneath 4 and 1. So, 4 plus 1 is 5. So, this is how the decimal value 785 can be encoded in 8421. Let's now move on to the part where we encode the value 785 of decimal in XS3. So, let's solve that. So, what we will do, we will take help from the chart and figure out the encodings for each of the digits. Now, 7 is encoded in XS3 as 1010. So, yes, for the first digit 7, the encoding will be 1010. Now, the next digit is 8. Now, for 8, the encoding in XS3 is 1011. So, the second digit will be this pattern only. Coming to the last one, that is 5, the encoding in XS3 of 5 is 1000. So, the encoding for 5 will remain as that. So, 785 in decimal is represented as 10101011100 in XS3. Now, the question is how to solve this without taking the help of the chart? So, for that, let's observe a pattern. We know that digit 7 in XS3 will acquire the pattern of decimal 10 in binary. Right? Similarly, the digit 8 in XS3 is supposed to acquire the pattern for decimal 11 in binary. And the same will happen for 5. In XS3, it will acquire the pattern of 8 in binary. Now, 10 in binary is 1010. 11 in binary is 1011. And 8 in binary is 1000. So, if we remember this particular logic, and if we are familiar with the binary values, we can easily find out the encoding of any decimal value in XS3. Let's now move on to the next part where we encode the decimal value 785 in 2421. So, let's solve that. Now, if you remember, in the previous session, I told you 2421 is also a self-complementary code. So, using the similar logic that we used for 3321, Let's find out the encoding for that. Now, if you observe carefully, it is 2421, right? Apart from the place value of the most significant bit, the place values of the least significant bits are similar to 8421. And that is the reason for the encoding of 0, 1 and 2, it will be similar. However, the encoding of 3 is a bit tricky because in 2421, we can encode 3 using two different patterns. Observe the first pattern. It is 0, 0, 1, 1. Basically, we have placed 1s underneath this 1 and this 2. Now, we can also encode 3 like this, placing 1 underneath this 2 and 1 underneath 1. 
Now which one of these two should we select? Here the 8 foot 2 1 will help us. Now in 8 foot 2 1, this particular pattern specifies the value 3 and this particular pattern specifies the value 9. Now we are to select the lesser values pattern. So for 3, the encoding in 2 foot 2 1 will be 0 0 1 1. Let's now observe what happens in case of 4. For 4, in 2 foot 2 1, we also have two different patterns. First, observe this pattern. We have placed 1 underneath 4 directly. Now coming to the next pattern, we can also construct 4 by placing 1s underneath these 2s. Now which one from these should we select? Taking help from 8 foot 2 1, we can say this particular pattern will give us the value 4 and this particular pattern will give us the value 10 because 1s are placed underneath 8 and 2. Now selecting the lesser values pattern, we will determine for 4 in 2 foot 2 1 the encoding will be 0 1 0 0. Now 2 foot 2 1 is a self complementary code, right? And as we have figured out the patterns for half of it, by toggling these patterns, we can determine the rest of the patterns. So let's do that. So if we toggle the pattern for 4, that is 0 1 0 0, we will end up getting the pattern for 5 1 0 1 1. Similarly, toggling the pattern for 3, we will end up getting the pattern for 6 1 1 0 0. Likewise, if we toggle the pattern for 2 0 0 1 0, we will end up getting the pattern for 7 1 1 0 1. Similarly, the pattern for 1 is 0 0 1. Therefore, the pattern for 8 will be 0 1 0. Now finally, 0 is 4 zeros. Therefore, the pattern for 9 will be all 1s. Let's now determine the encoding for 785. So for 7, the pattern is 1 1 0 1, right? So let's enlist that. Coming to the next digit, 8, the pattern is 0 1 0. We will enlist that too. Finally, for 5, that is the last digit, the pattern is 1 0 1 1. So let's enlist that. So basically, the encoding of 785 in 2 foot 2 1 will be this. Let's now move on to the portion where we encode 785 in 3 3 2 1. So let's solve that. Now we will again take the help of the familiar chart. This one we have seen in the previous session, haven't we? So using this chart, we can say the encoding for 7 is 1 1 0 1. So let's enlist that. Coming to the next digit 8, the pattern is triple one zero. So we will enlist that too. Now the last digit is 5 and the encoding for 5 is 1010. So if we enlist that, we will end up acquiring the encoding of 785 in 3321, which basically is this. So in this session, we observed three different solved problems on different binary codes. Alright people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we will learn about BCD addition. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.